everybody, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you partial fraction decomposition. So, we're going to start with a simple problem, and this one you may have seen in another one of my videos, but this is the basis, basically how partial fraction decomposition works. So, we have a fraction right here, and we want to split it up. So we see that we have this ugly part right here, n times n plus 1, and we want to write it in a nicer way. Now, partial fraction decomposition is especially useful when you're looking at uh, a set of uh, a sum of numbers. For example, 1 times 1 times 2 plus 1 times 2 times 3, and then so on. And you want to find the sum of that, all of those all the way up to, let's say, 1 over 100 times 101. And that might be pretty hard until you realize that there's another way to do it, which we'll see later in this video. So, like I said before, partial fraction decomposition is very useful in many different ways. So anyways, without further ado, let's get started onto this problem. So. What we're going to do is split this fraction up into two other fractions. Now, it doesn't always have to be two fraction, other fractions. But let's just say, we, uh, let's just try to split it up. And what makes, what sounds reasonable is if we put, so, uh, if we put one fraction with the denominator n and another fraction with the denominator n plus 1. Because when we add them together, they'll have to have a common denominator of n times n plus 1. Now we just have to solve for a and b. So we can do this by multiplying both sides by n times n plus 1 first, of course. So we're just left with 1 equals a times n plus 1 plus b times n. Because the terms can some of the terms cancel out when we're multiplying. Now we're stuck with a problem like this, and we might we see that we need some sort of system of equations in order to solve this, but there's a really smart way to get out of that situation. Instead, you can just plug in numbers. So, for what value of n would make this convenient to solve? Well, we can try n equals 0. If we put in n equals 0, this becomes a times 0 plus 1 plus b times 0. And guess what happens? When we plug in n equals 0, the b gets cancelled out. And all we have to do is just solve for a now. And we find that a equals 1. Now you might think this seems a little bit fishy because you're thinking, hey, this only works for one value of n. But what you'll find is that as long as it works for one value of n, it should work for all of the values of n. And this method is called the heavy side cover up method. And this is what we'll be using for basically the rest of this video because it's so easy to use. Now, Let's go back to this part and continue solving for b this time. So how do we solve for b? Well, we see that if we plug in negative 1, n equals negative 1, then a will be canceled out because if we let's just see what happens when we plug in negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1. So these cancel out and become 0. So then this whole term is just gone. And then this becomes b times negative 1. And when we solve for b, we have negative b equals 1. So b equals negative 1. And we're done. We've solved for a and b because the coordinate pair a, b is just 1, negative 1. So our solution to this up here, this whole thing, is just 1 over n times n plus 1 equals 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. And we're basically done because we found the solution. 
I mean the partial fraction decomposition. Now, you can kind of see why this is extremely useful when you're solving, sorry, when you're solving a sum of fractions. Because when you add them all, because, let's just say we're doing something like 1 times 1 times 2 plus 1 over 2 times 3, and we want to solve that. Well, we don't have to do much because if we use our new formula we just found but earlier, it's just 1 minus 1 half plus 1 half minus 1 third. And then the 1 half terms just cancel out. And we're left with 1 minus 1 third, which is equal to 2 over 3. And that is our solution for that. So you can kind of see how this is useful, because you can use partial fraction decomposition to cancel out a lot of terms. So now let's talk about some more complicated problems. For example, let's try solving n times n plus 1. Actually, no. How about n squared plus 2n minus 16 over n times n plus 1? Again, n times n plus 1 because that's pretty simple. So how are we going to solve this? Well, let's just write this as, again, as a over n plus b over n plus 1 and see what happens. So, the problem is here, is that we see that, actually, there isn't a problem, sorry. So we multiply both sides by n times n plus 1, and we can then solve for a and b, respectively. So, when we do that, we're left with n squared plus 2n minus 16 equals a times n plus 1 plus b times n. So again, we do our partial, we do the heavy side cover up method and we can plug in values of n to solve. So first let's just plug in zero, which is easy. So we have negative 16 equals a because the b gets canceled out earlier. <coughs> so we're left with a equals negative 16. So that's one of our solutions. Now we just have to solve for b. So we see that plugging in negative 1 cancels out with the 1 over here, and so a will become 0. So let's just plug in negative 1. We're left with negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 16 equals negative b. And then this ends up being 1 minus 2 minus 16 which is equal to negative 17 equals negative b. So b ends up equaling 17. So that's our second solution. So the ordered pair for that one, the one that we just did earlier, n squared plus 2n minus 16 over n times n plus 1 is just equal to, wait, what was our solutions? negative 16 over n plus 17 over n plus 1. That's pretty neat, right? So, using this method, we can solve a lot of things, but I will have to explain some more processes about partial fraction decomposition in the next video, which I will be making shortly after this video. So, be sure to check out my channel for that other video, and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.